Hey everyone, Anthony Sequera here with Stormwind.com and let's explore the OSPF router ID. A simple little concept, but let's make sure we understand exactly how it works. Let's talk about it and most importantly, let's go to the command line and ensure that it functions just the way Cisco tells us it's going to function on a Cisco router. And let's also make sure that we can completely and easily control this important aspect of OSPF. We remember that in OSPF, it will automatically select the highest IP address on an active interface for this router ID and that loopbacks are indeed going to override that physical IP address selection. Let's confirm that this truly works the way it's supposed to. So what I'm going to do here is I'm going to go to this Cisco router. I'm going to make sure I can ping my neighbor. Remember, before we do any demonstration, we want to make sure that we do indeed have basic connectivity. And you can see that we do indeed have basic connectivity. All right, between R1 and R2. Great. So I'm going to go in. I'm going to say, oh, you know what? Before we configure OSPF, let's do this. Let's configure some loopbacks. Notice we have the 10.10.10.1 IP address on this local router, okay, 10.10.10.2 on its neighbor. Let's do a loopback zero with an IP address of 1.1.1.1. Let's do a loopback one of IP address 1.10.10.1. Okay, so if we do our show IP interface brief, we see that we have a physical address of 10, 10, 10, 1, and we have loopback addresses of 1, 1, 1, 1, and 1, 10, 10, 1. Okay, now that we have these structures in place, let's set up OSPF. Router OSPF 1, I'll say network anything with a wildcard mask of anything, we're gonna go ahead and put you in area zero. This is a quick and easy way to make sure I'm running OSPF for all of these interface addresses. Let's now skip over to our neighboring device. I'm gonna say router OSPF one. I'm gonna say net our trick of the quad zeros area zero, and we'll wait for an adjacency to come up between these two devices. Yep, put them both in area zero, that should work great. I'll do a show IP OSPF neighbor. And yep, we're starting to form a neighborship with the R1 device, and look what was chosen as the router ID of that R1 device. It was one dot 10, dot 10, dot one. Let's go over and figure out why, shall we? Well, if we bring up our one and we look at this show IP OSPF result, and by the way, the adjacency just came up, good news. But look at that, look at the addresses it had to choose from. It went with, just as is documented, the highest IP address on a loopback interface. Notice the highest IP address was on the physical, but sure enough, the highest IP address for a loopback interface won out here. Now, what if I wanted to make the router ID of this router 100, 100, 100, 1? Well, we can utilize, as we covered, we can utilize the router ID command. So what we can do is we can go into global configuration mode and then router configuration mode and we can say router ID and notice this IP address doesn't even have to exist on our router. We can go ahead and set it to whatever we want. Notice it says reload or clear the IP OSPF process for this command to take effect. Wow, pretty cool. Now, if I do a show IP OSPF on this device, here I can confirm on the local device 
that the router ID is still what it was previously, that 1.10.10.1. So what we need it to do is we need it to, to bump over to the new one we configured, and it said we can get this effect by clearing the IP OSPF process. So let's try it. Oh, unfortunately, that just caused our neighborship to come crashing down. Yuck. So this was disruptive, but hopefully at least we'll get that new router ID that was set. So let's rerun our show IP OSPF command. And sure enough, we did indeed get the new router ID. So great. We have just confirmed that we know the important facts about the router ID that we should know. And we saw at the command line just how easy it is for us to control this important aspect of OSPF.